Hiya! Uh, so in this video, we're going to be covering the second to last uh, topic uh, for this week. Uh, so this topic's a little longer. Um, so buckle up. We're going to have some fun because we're looking at some theorems today. Uh, so before we start, we're going to actually look at a little side note. Um, and that's what we're going to look at is variance under addition. So we might have seen, so like uh, beforehand we had stated that if we have something like this, then we know that we can just pull out, uh, that looks weird. Uh, we can pull out the constants and that's okay. Uh, and the B kind of disappears. But what happens when we, mul we add multiple uh, variables, like random variables? Uh, and so if they're mutually independent, so if I have mutual independence for my variables, so say I have n of them, um, then I know that I can, I can do the same thing as normal. So I can just add them up. That's, that's okay. So this part is okay. But the problem is if the variables are dependent, they no longer work. Um, and we can actually see this very easily when x is equal to y. So they're dependent on one another, right? They're the same variable. So whatever x is, y must be as well. Um, and so let's look at uh, the addition. So if we have var of x plus y, this is var of 2x, um, which is just... Um, uh, I guess we don't even have to go that far. This is just for var of 4 of x, right? Because um, we just take the a and we square it outside. Uh, here's the way to do it with standard deviation. But we have 4 var of x. Alternatively, if I look at what... So this is this side, the left-hand side. What happens if I look at the right-hand side? So I just add them through the vars. Well, if I add the vars, well, I get x and y is the same. So I get var of x is equal to plus var of x. Um, and that gives me 2 times var of x. And so notice how the 2 and the 4 here are different. Um, and so if they're dependent variables, they're not going to be the same. Um, and so now we're going to start looking at things called the square root law and central, li and central limit laws. Um, and these, are, these should be very similar to kind of things we saw in um, the binomial distribution kind of era. Um, so let's kind of go back. Um, to then, um, and let's kind of remember how things kind of worked. Um, so what we have is, um, what we tried to do is we said, okay, if we have a lot of distributions and we increase the number of trials we have, then what we said is we should get slowly, we should slowly get towards our actual um, probability distribution, right? Um, so let's start off. So one of the big things there is that every trial was independent. So we're going to do a similar thing. We're going to suppose that we have n independent variables. So we suppose n independent random variables, each with the same distribution x. So we assume they all have the same distribution. We don't know what the distribution is, so it's not necessarily Bernoulli, uh, but we they all have the same distribution. Um, in other words, what this is saying is that the, pro, the dis, p of xi is equal to p of x for every xi. Um, since... Uh, expectation and variance are all determined by uh, the probability, what this is basically saying is that the expected value and the variance are also just dependent on um, x. Um, so what we're going to do um, is we're going to actually just look at the sum of the random variables. So I'm going to look at all the var random variables, and I'm going to look at the sum. Um, and we're going to look at um, what this kind of gives us. Um, so the sum is not too, too bad. Um, in this case, we would have, um, we're not going to go over this too much, uh, but for, uh, the expected value, we get n times e to the x. This, you just need to think of as, uh, it's not too hard to see, right? Because we just take the sum of all the things. Um, so expected of x1 plus all the way to xn, this is e of x1 plus e of xn, this is by linearity. And each of these are equal to 
to x, right? Um, and by very similar arguments with variance and standard deviation, we end up getting n of variance of x um, and square root of n standard deviation of x. So let me rewrite this. It's a little uh, standard deviation of x. Uh, the, the variance part is really coming from uh, this formula up here, which is only true when we have mutually independent variables. But we're assuming that, right? We're saying they're all independent of one another. Um, and so this is going to give us what we call the square root law. Um, so right away, we can kind of look at this law, um, which is basically stating, ooh, this is a dark red. Girl, no, no. Can I remove? I want you gone. That is way too dark. Way too dark. You can't reach Shiza. Uh, can I make this lighter? Yes. Okay, there we go. Let's try this. Still too dark. Let's try one more lighter. That should be okay. Um, okay, so we have the square root law, um, which basically says if we let S n be the sum of the independent of the n independent variables x one through x n, um, and we let x bar, so we let x bar n be the 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 average value. So this is just the expected value, kind of thing. Uh, then what we end up getting is the following: we end up getting the expected value of S n. This we already saw, right? This is just n e to the x, e of x. The standard deviation of x is, or sn, right? Um, is square root of n standard deviation of x. These two are really coming from up here, right? This is where this is coming from. Um, and then what's this um, x bar n? So this x bar n is basically saying that e of x and bar um, is just e of x, right? Because we just divide by n. And s d of the bar um, just divides by x, divides by uh, square root of n. Um, now, at first you might be like, well, I like where where is this kind of coming from? Like, what is what is this kind of giving? Um, this is basically look. This is the same thing that we had for before. This is the same square root law that we saw for the um, for the uh, for uh, by the binomial distribution. So this is just kind of expanding on off that. Um, and the big thing we're going to be going towards is the law of averages and the central limit theorem. So we'll kind of go over that next uh, to kind of see what happens. Um, with these things. The, the, the main thing to note is that as n gets bigger and bigger, we get bigger n, notice how this part here is going to get bigger. The SD of SN is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger because we have square root of n in front. Whereas the thing on the bottom, the SD of X bar of n, uh, sub n, uh, this is going to get smaller and smaller because we're dividing by the square root of n. Um, so this one's going to increase while the bottom one's going to decrease. Um, and this is actually going to give us what's called the law of averages. Uh, so the law of averages is basically stating um, that, um, so if we let everything be just exactly as before, then for every epsilon greater than zero, what we have is the, um, the absolute, oops, I need to write this a little better. The difference between this bar and the expected value, right? So you can think of this bar really as an expected value, like the average, right? Because um, we're dividing by n. Uh, that the difference between the xn and the expected value, um, less being less than epsilon, um, this is going to go to one. Like this is always going to happen um, as we increase um, n. So the bigger the n, the closer these two things are going to go. Um, so yeah, so that's basically what the law of averages is saying. Over time, the average is going to be the same thing as the expected value. Um, notice here, basically what we have is that we don't have an approximation for Sn, right? 
We didn't use um, any approximation or anything. Um, and the reason why is there's no simple formula for this. Um, and so um, normally we use this the normal approximation to find um, a simple approximation for SN. Uh, but uh, we do that for in the next part. So the central limit theorem is basically handling that. So in the central limit theorem, what we kind of have um, is uh, the following. So we have the same set of things as before. We let, we're let we looking at SN, and this time we want to compare SN with everything. Uh, and remember, we have these conditions for uh, the expected value of SN and the standard deviation of SN. Then the, dis the distribution, so the difference between these two, um, between A and S, or A and B, um, is just exactly what we would expect. Um, and here you'll notice that this is just our normal approximation. Uh, so the things to note here is that this here is the expected value of Sn, and this here is the standard deviation of Sn. So really, this is giving us the a way to look at the normal approximation. Um, and this phi here is just the phi that we um, had from before. So there's really no difference. Um, so if we kind of look at these three theorems, they're they're big theorems conceptually, and I kind of went over them fairly quick. Um, and so what this is basically saying is, um, I have, so I'm gonna quickly go over this again, and I'm sure there'll still be questions in class. Um, what we do is we take n independent random variables, x1 through xn, and then I sum them up to get sn. Um, and here, then we calculated what the expected value is, the variance, and the standard deviation. Right, this is what we did in this little part here. Um, and this was not too hard. I did it for the expected value here. Um, and variance and standard deviation are very similarly done. Um, and that basically gave us the first um, rule, the square root law. So the square root law was saying, what's the expected value of Sn and what's the standard deviation of Sn? And then we also looked at this x bar of n. This x bar of n is just the average value of each of the xi, right? Because we're taking Sn, which is a sum, and we're dividing by n. So this is just the average value. Um, so it's kind of makes sense that the average value should be equal to e of x. That's the expected value of any one of them. So it should just be equal to that. It makes sense. Um, the only weird part is this standard deviation. The standard deviation now, because we have to divide by n, um, gives me um, the square root of n. So here you can kind of think of this as um, this is just SD of SN divided, uh, right? SD divided by n, right? And then here we would just pull out the n on the bottom. So this is where these are coming from, um, these formulas. Uh, and so it's it's not too difficult to see, uh, but the it's like it's kind of showing nothing at the same time. So it's kind of weird. Um, and then what this gives us is basically looking at averages. It's saying over time, um, how is this going to look? Like what is this going to go towards? Um, the first thing we note is that the average, so our x n, um, our x n over is equal to s n over n. So our average. This is going to go towards the expected value. The difference between the two are going to be different um, over time. As we grow n, the, the probability that they're different is going to be almost zero. Um, and then we said, well, what happens with Sn? And that gives us the central limit theorem. And basically what this is saying is as n grows, this is going to look more and more like the normal distribution. But the thing to note here is that I never mentioned that this is a binomial distribution, that this is Bernoulli, none of that. The only thing I assumed is that these random variables are independent with the same distribution. So if I have random variables with the same distribution um, and they're all independent of one another, then I can use the normal distribution to approximate it. That's massive. Like, that's huge. 
Like, I don't even care what the distribution is, and I can approximate it with the normal distribution. Like, that's pretty slick. Um, so in the next video, I'm gonna look at an example of this, um, and we'll kind of see how this uh, kind of falls into play. So I will see you in the next uh, video. Uh, and as always, if there's questions, ask it on the Monday update. I guess it'll be after um, reading week. So I will see you then.